I've been wanting to make this one for a long time. In today's Thirsty Thursday video, we are going to make a scorpion. Welcome to Thirsty Thursday. I'm Mark and this is the Average Me channel. And today we are going to make a classic tiki cocktail, the scorpion. Now you can't very well make a scorpion without talking about the origins of this drink. This drink actually originated when Trader Vic, Victor Bergeron, was visiting Honolulu back in the 1930s. And he was at a bar called The Hut. And he had this drink and what he really liked about it, it was served in a communal bowl. So you can have two, three, four people all drinking from a common scorpion. But this was made from a spirit that was fermented and derived from the Hawaiian tea plant. Okalahau is the name of the spirit. And of course, Trader Vic didn't have that back in Oakland where the original Trader's Vic bar was. So he created his own version of this concoction made up of a variety of different tasty fruits. But instead of Okalahau, what he used was rum. Since then, of course, he created the cocktail and there's been a lot of variations. So you see, I have a cookbook here. So our version is take it. Now you're saying, wait a minute, you have a Mickey Mouse cookbook. Oh, this is kind of special though. This cookbook goes back to, I believe it's 1987. Yes, that's correct. And in this book, there is a recipe for the scorpion. And this is the way it was served back in the 1980s at the Ohana Bar at the Polynesian Village Resort. So that's where I'm taking this recipe from. Now, I checked a variety of different scorpion recipes, and there really isn't a lot of variation from what you're going to see. Um, for the most part, it's the same ingredients with just a little different ratio. So what are we going to use? We're going to use fresh squeezed orange juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, fresh squeezed lime juice. We're going to use a little bit of simple syrup. We're going to use some orgeat. Now orgeat is um, derived from almond and this looks to be a really good um, or Jot here. It's liquid alchemist and if you don't shake it up it settles so we're gonna make sure we give this a good shake before we use it. It calls for brandy. We're going to use, I just happen to have uh, Paul Masson VS brandy in the house and you know I wouldn't use a really fine sipping brandy for this because most um, just average typical brandies that you would use to mix drinks that is going to turn out just fine. And a silver rum, so we're going to use Bacardi for this. Now the strange thing about this, I anticipated that this cocktail was going to be shaken. Usually when you have this much fruit and you know syrups like orgeat, you want to really mix that up. But then again, I suspect because the scorpion is such a typically a very large drink that's served in these communal uh, glasses, it's always stirred. Every recipe I found, with the exception of one where they blended it, which didn't seem right to me at all, it's stirred. So we're going to be stirring it today. And the other thing we're going to do is serve it in this glass. Now I had a frosted version of this glass. But then when I moved, I have no idea what happened to it. It disappeared. So finally, on a recent trip to Disney World, I did find this glass. It was the only one in the entire store. It was at the Boutique. And it's not frosted, but it's very similar to the glass I have and the glass that I remember that the Scorpion was served in. Now this is only going to be a single. This is not going to be a multiple, so it's not served you know, in a, in a big, communal mug, but this is going to work just fine. And also we're going to finally the, the creme de la creme 
is going to be our hibiscus flower. And I'll tell you, I went outside and for some reason the hibiscus are just not in bloom. So this is not real photogenic. It's not a bad one. But when I went out to pick this, something bit me. I don't know if it was an ant or what it was, but something bit me on the finger. So I suffered to get that flower for you. So let's get started. Now there's going to be a little bit of guesswork here because there's no indication whether I should stir this with ice or not. So I do have my strainer. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. And typically this is served um, over crushed ice. So I do have some crushed ice here. But let's see how it goes. Since it's going to the, into crushed ice, I don't really see the benefit of stirring it with ice, but I just feel it should be. So let's get started. And it's always tricky. You know, we've got this, these great big oranges down here and they never seem to fit into my squeezer. They just don't. Um, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. And if I have to cut them into quarters in order to juice it, I think I'm just gonna do that out of the gate. This is just way too big and it's just not fitting very well. So we're gonna cut these into quarters and then we're going to juice them. I don't know, you know, it'd probably be easier. I'm sure that um, when you go and order these, they're just gonna use store-bought orange juice. They're not going to really juice it, right? So we're going to use an ounce and a quarter. Okay, that's pretty good. So we're going to go with that. And boy, I am going to have fruit all over the place. I didn't anticipate that. So there is my ounce and a quarter of orange juice. Next, we're going to have one half ounce of lemon juice. Let's get this out of the way. And this is gonna be a whole lot more than a half ounce as well. So I just might, you know, I had contemplated actually doubling this recipe because there are such small quantities of everything, um, but I didn't, so. Yeah, that's, that's it, that little portion of a squeeze there. Um, but I didn't do it, and now I kinda wish I decided to. Should we go ahead and do that anyway? We'll make it the way that the recipe calls for, and then we'll make adjustments as we have to. And that's the nice thing about drinks like this. You know, there is no absolute. Now with the lime, there's only gonna be a quarter ounce of lime. That's not gonna be hardly anything here. We've got some really good limes lately, and this one really does have a lot of juice to it. So there is my quarter ounce of lime juice. And now we can get rid of this cutting board and all of these pieces of fruit. There, that gives us a little bit of room to work. Now we're gonna use a half ounce of simple syrup. And of course, um, make your own simple syrup. That's what I do. And simple syrup is so easy to make. It's one part sugar, one part water. All you do is dissolve it on the stove. It takes about three minutes and put it in a, oh, this is brand new, I gotta crack it open. Put it into a bottle. I don't even remember what that bottle was from. I've been using that over and over for my simple syrup every time I make it. Okay, I had been shaking this up like crazy, so I'm gonna give it one more good shake before I put it in here. This stuff just settles so much. There we go. And now it's gonna be one half ounce of the Arjant syrup. And like I said, this gives it a little bit of an almond taste to it. I'm gonna start putting some of these bottles over here in front of Mickey, just to make some room so I'm not spilling everything. The next thing we're going for is our main spirit, and that's going to be a silver rum. So we're gonna put an ounce and a half. And I don't have the original recipe from Trader Vic. 
I do have a book here from Don the Beachcomber and between Trader Vic and Don the Beachcomber, they did really create um, much of the tiki culture that we had seen primarily in the 40s and 50s throughout the US. So we're gonna go with one half ounce of brandy. And then we're just going to give it a stir. And I thought I had a straw out here someplace. Oh, I put it over on the counter there. So I'm gonna have to take a, a little break in a moment just in order to go and get my straw because I won't be able to drink this without it. So we're gonna get ourselves, I really do need a new ice bucket because this one, it looks nice, but it's, um, it's just so hard to scoop out of. Okay, and I'm going to um, strain this right into our tiki mug. This is the same type that they serve the scorpion in at Ohana at Walt Disney World's Polynesian Village. So we get a little more ice in there to top it off. And we're going to put our hibiscus flower in there. Oh, does not look beautiful? And now, excuse me for a minute when I go get myself a straw. There it is. So let's put that in there. And we are going, which side is the front? I guess there's a face on either side, so it doesn't much matter. Oh, this is spilling. We can't, we can't have our drink spill, can we? But we're gonna start um, with, with a picture. I don't know if we're gonna put this on the thumbnail, but we're gonna pose for a picture nevertheless. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, that tastes really good. Um, yeah, you can, the orgeat is really important in this one. I'm getting all of the different citrus, a beautiful blend of citrus. And I'll tell you when you fresh squeeze that, you really do, it doesn't taste like, you know, orange juice from a carton. You got the lime, the lemon, the orange juice, that orgeat, that almond, and brandy. Brandy actually is um, derived from grapes. So there's a lot of different fruit dancing around in this one. Mm. What I do remember is that the scorpion sneaks up on you. Now there's not a whole lot of alcohol in here. It's two ounces, but that's enough. Now imagine you, you know, quadruple this recipe and put it in a giant communal bowl or a, a, you know, a large version of this. And then you have all the different straws in and people are having a good time and they're sipping away. It doesn't take long before that does uh, come up and, and it, it bites you by surprise. Mmm. This is delicious. Now I can't compare this to the drink that Trader Vic first tasted at the hut in Honolulu almost 90 years ago. I can't even compare this to what he made when he got home. But I can tell you, this brings me back to Ohana at the Polynesian Village. This is really a tasty drink. I know how I'm gonna use the rest of that fruit. When I'm done, I'm having another one. Now, probably not all by myself, I'm going to share some of this with my wife and see what she thinks of it, but you can't go wrong. This is the perfect tiki drink. And it really is served in the perfect tiki mug. I know the Scorpion is typically a communal cocktail, but you can try it on your own just like I did, or double or triple the recipe and see what you end up with. Let me know what you think. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you do, don't forget to ring that bell icon up above. That way you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mark, and this is Thirsty Thursday on the Average Me channel.